I wanted to share with you the 100 day project and the importance of doing something like this. It is not for everyone. Don't make it complicated. If you can spend five to 10 minutes a day on it, you will have so much fun and a lot of success. Here's all the information you need. You can go to the 100dayproject.org. There's a whole fact sheet. You can sign up for their newsletter, which keeps you going every week with little prompts and tips for keeping focus and that kind of thing. I learned about this project on Instagram. So the hashtag is hashtag the 100 day project. But if you search for do the 100 day project, there's a lot of useful information there as well. And I wanted to share with you what I'm doing this year and how it's evolved. I also want to show you last year's project. So let's get into that. Last year, I revitalized my YouTube channel by doing the 100 day project. Now mine didn't last 100 days, but I was more than happy with it. What I did was I filled this little sketchbook and that was my total intention was to fill an entire sketchbook with color studies. So I took three colors. So I blended this one into this one and then this one into this one. And then from this, that was day one, I created a leaf which was day two and so on and so on. So I'm going to just do a flip through and you can find this on my playlist as the 100 day project. So you'll be able to see this entire sketchbook done with that. It's a lot of fun color combinations. I mean, look at that gorgeousness. I show you how to do simple leaves. Leaves are everywhere. So that's why I picked them. And it was just a fun way to create the challenge and it was simple enough and I enjoyed the process. <laughs> that is the most important to me. So look for that if you are interested. So what I did from here, I thought about this year, do I want to do color again? And for me, I love the color practice, but this is something that I do every day now. I didn't want to just spend time doing this exact exercise. Since becoming really intrigued with the idea of concertina sketchbooks, <laughs> I'm going to share what inspired me in this one. When I first got my concertina sketchbook, I just pasted stuff in there to get me over the blank page because this is much bigger than I'm used to working. But what I really found in this book is I enjoyed the ever unfolding story. I love the connectivity. So this page connects to the next. See that it has a little overlapping, which connects into the next and so on and so on. And I really love the idea of telling stories. I like that it is one thought, yet it can be broken down into various days. And I love that I got bolder and more confident as I went. Because of this journey, I developed a class called Found and Curated. That is a year long class that I have. And I wanted to share with you what inspired what I'm going to do for this year's 100 day project. another concertina book, but this one I'm working inside differently, right? So I'm telling a story. It's about finding your voice as an artist and being as unique as possible for yourself, being true to yourself, finding that inner connection to your art. Now, if you've watched my channel for any time, you know that I love nature. And of course, this is nature. That is great. As we went into February, this emerged. <laughs> Not only did it have beautiful flow and connectivity, but I actually found what really connected to me here. And I love the idea that all of these things are things that I have in the studio. I liked that they were personal to me. I collect vintage jewelry, right? So this is a pin that was made into a necklace for me, a vintage pin. I love tags and I love nature of all kinds. I collect little hearts and I collect art supplies and things like that. So when I did this page, 
I was like, why can't I do something like this for the 100 day project? Something that gives me layering. You'll notice that the egg is in front of the tag. This little leaf here is stuck into the hole, so it gives another layer, it adds a shadow. This tag is in front of this bookmark, which is in front of this postcard which is behind this branch of star magnolia buds, which is tucked inside of this cup. And in front there is a pencil and a shelf with more things even in front of that. It was the layering process and the connectivity to myself that I really want to explore for the 100 days. So let me show you what I'm going to be doing. I love the idea of continuing the story with connectivity to myself. This is a much smaller book. This is an A5. The other one was an A4. I will have links for both of them in the video description below. And when I was trying to define for myself what exactly I wanted to do, this is what I came up with. A hundred days of random things. <laughs> I know, right? I wanted something that could let me play and experiment without being really structured. So I didn't want 100 days of nature or 100 days of vintage things or anything that concrete. So I wanted something that gave me a little wiggle room. So if I wanted to paint a tag today, I could. But tomorrow, say, I want to do a leaf or something that I find in nature. And then the next day, maybe I want to do a flower or a vase or a plate or whatever I find. I just wanted it to connect to me at this day, the day that I'm creating it. And I am looking forward to this unfolding. Can you just imagine things? I will do some things individually, but I am also planning on doing a little bit of still life work as well. Maybe some vignettes to just make them kind of stand alone. So think of maybe a group of two or three things instead of like a whole shelf of things like I just showed you. This is something that you're considering doing for yourself. Ask yourself, what would keep you inspired for a hundred days? For me, I love the idea of it being random. <laughs> I like the idea that I'm not limited with color or things or items or shapes or space even. So I could do something really tiny if I want, but I could also do something really huge. I could take it off the page if I want. I can have it lopsided and crooked and really small and detailed. I could have a circle inside of a circle inside of a circle if I wanted. I can have take up four pages. I can take up a half of a page. I could take up a third of a page. I'm not giving myself any boundaries because I wanted to take shape as I go. And I know from doing those other two concertina books that this is the way that I work best is when I have room to grow and experiment, but also have some kind of boundary. So my boundary for me is the book. And just the boundary of random things. <laughs> I am really looking forward to this. I will be sharing my process probably every 14 days as they're already painted so that I can give you my thoughts on them. I might do some fast forwarding of some of my techniques that I'm used doing because I know painting and learning is part of my channel and I do want to provide that as well. If you have any questions, you can find the information here or you can write to me in the comments below and I will do my best to help you out. <laughs> I've only done it for three years, but it has really shaped me in a way that I didn't think it would because I'm looking at the 100 days as a habit. Just like my five to 10 minute practice that you saw me do all year, this is another practice that I'm really looking forward to. And if you will be joining me, please share your hashtag below so that I can look you up on Instagram and follow along in your journey. I would love to do that. If you were inspired by today's video, please like, comment, or subscribe. It will really help my channel grow. Thanks so much for watching.